What's up? Welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to be doing an updated inventory storage tour. So if you're new here, welcome. My name is Jenna and I'm a full-time reseller online. I sell on the Poshmark app and I mainly sell clothing, shoes, bags, accessories, etc. And it's my full-time job. I absolutely love it. So like I said, welcome if you're new. Now today's video is going to be all about how I store and organize my inventory. I am full-time. I have a lot of items. I currently have just over 1,100 active listings on Poshmark, and some of those listings are multi-quantity, so I might have more than one of the same item. I probably have closer to 2,000 items in my inventory, and I store everything at home where I work, and I wanna have everything easily accessible and ready to go when I sell it. So I have come up with a system. I've had a system in place for quite a while, but it has definitely evolved over the years. I actually, did an inventory storage video when I first started this YouTube channel a couple years ago. And while some of it is the same, things have definitely changed since then. And even before I had YouTube, I had a totally different system as far as how I stored my inventory. So I wanted to update you guys and let you know where I'm at right now because I really love the system that I have in place. I finally feel like everything has a home and I have not lost an item in a long time. There is definitely a time way back when I first started reselling and let me know if you guys have ever been there where I sold something and then I was frantically looking all over the house because I had no idea where I put it. I used to just have stuff in all different areas of the house, in different rooms, no organization whatsoever. So like I said, I've kind of evolved a system over the years and it's definitely worked for me. But today I just wanted to share my system with you all in hopes to inspire you or give you some ideas on how you can store your inventory because let me tell you, it is so much less stressful not having to worry about where your items are and also just everything having a place in a home um, instead of it being out and everywhere really keeps the stress levels down especially for me and every single thing that I'm showing in today's video I'm gonna be linking in the description box down below so definitely check out the description box I will link absolutely everything if I forget something or there's something you see that I didn't link let me know down in the comment section I will let you guys know um, respond to the comments and also add it into the description box. So I really appreciate if you catch something that I miss, but yes, I'm gonna link everything. So if you want to get any of these exact items for yourself, you can. Nothing in this video is sponsored. Everything I purchased with my own money. I have tried all kinds of different things and these are what work for me. So without further ado, let's get into the tour. Starting off the tour in my inventory room slash office, this is where I keep a majority of the inventory because most of my listings are clothing and I like to have them put away in these bins. I get these bins at Home Depot. The shelving is also from Home Depot. It's just a really nice quality utility shelving, really easy to put together, lightweight but sturdy. And I started with that first um, four shelves and then I have expanded and I now have this one in the corner. And then I actually have some more in another room. Once I added boutique or wholesale, my inventory started really growing exponentially. So I now have eight shelving units and 10 bins fit on each one. So I have 80 bins total. As you can see, they just fit really nicely. They're the perfect size together and it's very easy to slide them in and out. That's why I like having them on shelves versus just stacking them on, on each other because I don't want to have to take off more bins than I need to. 
And as you can see, I number my bins. I use mailbox number decals. I got these at Home Depot as well. They're just easy to see and use as labels. So now I wanna show you what it looks like inside the bins and how I keep my items organized and ready to be shipped once they sell. So I'm gonna pull out a bin and I really like these because they have a flip top lid. It saves a little bit of time, I know it's silly. Instead of having to take off a lid, you can just flip it open. And as you can see, I pre-bag my inventory in clear plastic bags and I number them and I keep the numbers on the outside so I can easily flip through and find the item I'm looking for. I'll explain that system a little bit more in a minute, but let's go ahead and talk about pre-bagging the item. So I'm gonna share my secret to how to get everything to look nice and neat in these bags. I personally am a terrible folder, so I use these handy folding boards to fold my inventory and give them a really nice professional presentation. I have two sizes. The pink one is smaller, great for t-shirts and smaller items, and then the blue one is nice for bulkier items, but you could really get away with just the pink one. So I'm going to give you a quick demo of how the folding board works. You just place your item face down and you fold anything that's hanging over the edge um, kind of onto itself within the board and then you flip in each side as well as the bottom and you're done. It just takes a second and it looks really nice. Um, both of these boards I purchased on Amazon. And then the next step is just to place the item in a clear plastic poly bag. I'm going to talk about the ones that I use in just a minute, but I store them right next to where I'm folding. And as you can see, it just slips in there really nice and looks really neat. It's easy to use and I like storing them this way because it's organized and easy to have and ship. And then the last thing I need to do is just place the inventory number on that. So I just place that right on the bag. Now I want to go through all the supplies I just used. Um, first on top of this cart I do keep a lint roller if I need to clean anything as well as some little scissors if I need to trim any loose threads. Um, so that's always there and then within the cart is where I store the clear poly bags and I have a different size in each drawer. So the first one is this 9 by 12 size and I order these from a website called Eco Enclose. They're made from 100% recycled material. It's a more sustainable um, shipping company they have a lot of different supplies so I order this 9 by 12 size and then the other one that I use a lot probably the most frequently used is the 11 by 14 so those two um, I highly recommend if you do a lot of like tops skirts pants etc and then I do have some larger ones now these I order from a different company on Amazon the company is called pack and seal they're not sustainable um, it's just that eco clothes doesn't have as many size options currently I'm hoping they'll get more but I do need some bigger ones for bags and bulkier items like jackets and things like that so I have two more drawers with even larger bags in them and then the bottom drawer holds a bunch of miscellaneous supplies. So I use these um, branded hang tags on some of my boutique items that don't come with tags. I get those on Vistaprint. And then the inventory numbers I order from Amazon, they're in a roll of one through 1,000. So I usually have a roll that I'm currently using. And then I have a backup roll as well. So once I run out, I just basically start over again with the numbers. And then these are some blanks size stickers on items that I have multiple quantities of. I label the outside with size stickers and I just have a Sharpie so I can write the size on there. And then um, just some different like safety pins, rubber bands, etc. So we're back in the inventory room and I want to show you how I use the inventory code in order to find an item once it sells. So basically I'm going to go into the listing on Poshmark and this is if I've already listed the item. If not, I write the inventory number down so I have it when I'm ready to list. But I'm just going to click edit on the listing and I'm going to scroll down to the bottom and there is something that was recently added within the last year. It's called additional 
details. It's a private listing feature and you can just click show details and the SKU is where I'm going to put the number. So bin 14, item 392 is what I write in the SKU. 14, 392. And that shows when the item sells and I go to print my label. I'm going to be able to see this so I know exactly what bin and item number to pull and basically I'm good to go. And if you sell on another platform that doesn't have hidden listing fields, you can just put it at the end of your description. Um, here I have my roll of inventory numbers. I just go one by one down the roll. That's how I decide what item gets what number. And then I look for a bin that has some space in it. Like that one has some room. Four looks like it has some room on top. So that's why I like having clear bins. Um, three is pretty full. So I don't um, have like a list of where I need to put more inventory. I just look and see what's available and I list into that bin. There is probably a slim chance that two items might have the same inventory number, but since I use clear bags, I can see which one I'm looking for. And then for items I have multiple sizes in, I do not put an inventory number on these bags. I only put a size sticker because it's easy for me to see the item. I have a bunch of them. I really just need to know I'm picking the right size. So that's why I put the size sticker on there. And then I'll only put the bin number. So for instance, 27, that will go in the SKU field. That's all I need. And I did want to mention Home Depot changed the lids of these bins. So this is actually the newest flip top lid. It doesn't have quite as many little interlocking things, which I think these are easier to open and close. That's probably why they switched it. So if you're looking at Home Depot, these are still the same bins as the other ones I've shown. And a really common question I receive is how many items do these bins hold? And obviously that's going to vary on the size and bulkiness of your items. So I would say I probably average around 40 to 45 items per bin. If they're smaller t-shirts, I can probably fit more. Bigger sweatshirts, it's going to be less. But I store really bulky stuff in another area. Now we're back in the inventory office area where I have my desk and just some basic supplies on there. That's where I do my shipping and I have a closet in this room and this is where I do store some of those bulkier items. So I'm just going to open this up and as you can see I have quite a bit of room in here right now. I do have a lot of empty space um, but I do store like bulkier jackets and things in here because if I were to fold those it would take up way too much space in a bin. So I just keep these hanging in here and um, I don't have too many right now since we're about to transition into spring but I do have room for more. And then up on the shelf I have some wholesale shoes I have that are just new in box shoes. I have a lot of room on these shelves as well. If I needed to have more shoe storage than the other area I'm going to show you, I would put them up here, but right now I'm good on space. And then just down below is where I keep my reusable Ikea bags and stuff that I use for shipping, um, for carrying my shipping. It's all in this laundry hamper. And then behind that I just have some packing paper. And then on the other side of the closet is where I store my shipping supplies. So I have my priority boxes up top. And then I have this large drawer set from Home Goods. And I store the rest of my supplies in here. I have some tissue paper and packing tape. And then I have my poly mailers inside. I order branded poly mailers from Sticker Mule. I've talked about that before. Um, I'm looking into some other options right now, but I really enjoy using those. And then I have excess of the clear poly bags in here because I order them in bulk. It's much cheaper to order larger quantities, so that's what I do. And then the very bottom is more office supplies like extra shipping labels, packing tape, etc. The next closet is going to be my shoe storage and I do use as many closets as I can that I have available because I like to kind of keep my inventory behind closed doors as much as I can so I don't have to look at it all the time. But I do store um, pretty much all my shoes in boxes ready to be shipped. I've talked about this before. I mainly use the priority mail shoe boxes so I just have them stacked up and each one has the 
pair of shoes in it. And I do pre-wrap my shoes as well, just like I did with the clothing. I use the clear poly bags because I find it just keeps them clean and organized. And I like the way it looks. It gives a really good presentation. And I'll stuff the rest of the box with packing paper, the brown packing paper that I showed in the closet before. And that way the shoes don't move around. And then I just put numbers on the boxes like I do with clothing. So I'll put that number in the hidden SKU listing field so I know which shoe box has the shoes I'm looking for. So again, it's just really simple system. Um, if the shoes have like a shape I don't want them to lose like these, you can't really see it, but there's packing paper or tissue inside the shoe. And again, I'll just use the clear poly bag on the outside. Now, of course, all shoes aren't gonna fit in that size box. So I do have some larger boxes down here at the bottom. These are the large shipping box. I think it's 12 by 12 by eight. The number is still on the outside, but as you can see, these fit larger shoes like boots. So I do store them that way if possible, and I stack them again on top of each other. Um, I keep all these open in case I need to like bundle things or put other items in the box. And then this pair, for instance, is too big even for that box, so I just put the sticker on the outside, and I'll find a box for those when they sell. And one other thing I wanted to mention, I keep these activated charcoal bags in each closet. They're great for air freshening, purifying the air, and you can actually reactivate them in the sunlight. I got these on Amazon. Okay, next is this hall closet, which is right next to the inventory room. And this small closet is jam-packed. You're about to see how much I fit in here. And I have a variety of items. So in the top corner, I have some hats that I'm selling as well as a hat form and then a lot of handbags. So I actually just listed a ton of new handbags. So that is pretty full. I do try to sort them by size. So I have like smaller bags and wallets. And then the next shelf up, I have like medium bags and then large bags at the top. Although I probably could come up with a better way to keep these organized. I do keep them in the clear poly bags as well but I don't put any kind of number on them. They are pretty easy for me to spot which one sells, so I just have them as is. And then, yeah, that works for me, although it is pretty full right now. And then down below that, I have some jewelry items. These are pretty much all boutique or wholesale jewelry items, and I have them sorted by type. So I have like earrings together, I have some watch bands, and um, I have them separated in little compartments. I got these at the container store, and I like it because you can put these dividers in between the sections. And then down below, I wanted to utilize the space down here. So I got these stacking bins, again, from container store, and I have like headbands, hats, scarves, just more accessories. And again, everything is bagged. I just think it keeps things neat and clean. And then across the bottom, I have some boutique bags. And then the final little container over here has some belts in it. Um, I store most of my belts in a different area, but these are ones that need to be bagged. So yeah, I just have everything um, in its own little home. And trust me, it wasn't always like this, but I'm really happy it is now. And then the last closet is in my room where I take photos and have the other bins. So I'm just trying to give you a little perspective on my workspace. But this closet has the rest of my accessories. So across the top on the shelf, I have the boutique hats that I sell. So I just have those stacked up. And then the main attraction in this closet are the belts. I love selling belts. If you've been following me, I talk about them all the time. But I struggled for a little while figuring out how to store them, but I have finally found that these rings work really well. I got these at Container Store. I believe they have them on Amazon as well, but it's really easy just to slide off the one that you need. So I have quite a few because I don't want to keep too many on one ring. And what I do is I sort them by type of belt. So I'll have like embroidered belts together, tooled belts together, ones that have like chain or embellishment together. That way, if I sell a belt, I kind of know which ring to go for instead of having to to look through all of them so um, yeah this has worked really well for me and I love it the other thing in this closet is jewelry these are jewelry items that 
I found at, you know, estate sales, thrift stores, etc. And I found it really handy to keep it in this organizer. I also keep sunglasses at the bottom of the organizer. This is from the container store and it's double sided. It has quite a bit of room in it. But then for most necklaces, I actually hang them next to it on command hooks. So I just have these organized by like shorter necklaces on top and then I have longer ones on some slightly bigger hooks on the bottom. So those are just easy to take out when they sell. And then this isn't really inventory related, but this is how I store my cleaning supplies and tools and things I use all the time. I have an over the door clear shoe organizer and this is just super handy and helpful to be able to grab what I need. I usually keep my most used tools like eye level or where I can grab them easily. But yeah, I wanted to share this in case it might help someone else because I absolutely love having everything right there. So that's it for today's video. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you did find it helpful or useful or inspiring, please give this video a thumbs up. I would really appreciate it. And like I mentioned before, if you have any questions, if I missed any links in the description box, let me know in the comment section down below so I can get back to you. And please subscribe if you're not subscribed already. I will see you guys in my next video. Bye.